you are now listening to the fastest show on IE Sports Radio. My name is Daryl Kinsey Jr. Welcoming you, taking a lap for the extra mile for two days, September 21st, 2023. And it is a beautiful day in the Formula One world. The second round of the NASCAR playoffs gets started at Texas. And help me talk about all of this. Of course, my co-host, Michael Ward. Michael? What's going on, everybody? If you're listening, make sure to get your comments in. We will read them as we go on the show. And thank you all for joining us tonight as it's going to look like it's going to be pretty stormy here on the East Coast, at least on Saturday. However, um, NASCAR's in Texas, so they will not be bringing the rain with them, thank God. But, Michael, it is a very special day today. Oh, why is that, sir? Because... Red Bull finally didn't win an F1 race! Yes, the streak of 10 races is finally over, and it is done by a team I don't think anybody thought would be would be the winner. I'm sorry if uh, Chris is listening, but we, we had to. It's just, it's been so long. Yeah, it's so been long. very long yeah. since we and had there- a different winner. And there might be a rules reason to that, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. But watching the race on su- on Sunday, uh, Sunday morning, which was, you know, the nighttime there in Singapore, watching five cars under two seconds at the end of that race, that is something that we haven't seen in forever in Formula yeah. One. It was such an incredible race. Yeah, it was. It's usually like maybe one or two cars. Now in this race, it was five cars. Right? It was the Sykes, Norris, Russell, Hamilton, and Leclerc yep. potentially had a chance to win this race. Yeah, and it was. It, it, y'all have to understand the entire dynamic of that race shifted when it realized this wasn't going to be a Lull Verstappen. Um, there was an early safety car that kind of put Red Bull back, but they struggled all weekend when it came can to I, qualifying in I the race. Say, can I just say, and I hope Chris is listening, mm-hmm. I took absolute pleasure watching Verstappen get overtaken. <laughs> That's kind of a little beef there, but as Larry says in the chat, it was like watching League One or La Liga in soccer. You already know the champion way before the season was over. I mean, you can put Bundesliga in there, too, unless somebody finally beat Bayern Munich, which I don't think anyone has. But it has been such... It was such a good race. Yeah, it and was you a saw, good race. You know, you saw the pit walls getting involved and the strategy, and they're trying to figure out, you know, what's going to be the best way to chase down the Ferrari. And Ferrari, for their part, they got it right. On Sunday, there, there were no major mistakes that we have to talk about in signs at the end with the strategy play to push Norris back into the oncoming Mercedes, which if he hadn't done that, he was going to lose that race. Both Mercedes were on medium tires and were eating them up by about two seconds a lap. Yep, and he kept Norris in that DRS range to keep them both from getting overtaken which is very smart very smart i think that's one of the smartest things i've seen an f1 driver do in like a long time Mm -hmm. to purposely keep the car behind you in drs it can't overtake you but it can slow the other team down and i think that was very calculating play there i have to give it to science yeah i mean signs played a did a 5000 IQ play and I can't be mad at it. Um unfortunately Russell just he was a rookie in a situation that you know he hadn't been in before trying to chase down that first win, got it a millimeter wrong on the braking and went straight in the wall. Um I think he won last year at Brazil. Oh yeah, he did. Oh he did. <clears throat> I forgot about that. Yeah. That's how long Mercedes. it's been. Yeah, I think Mercedes they, is only win. Yeah, um, yeah, but he's looking for win number two. Sorry, and it's their first win in a while. Yeah, obviously, and, and it was and the you first remember, time. This is a team that's used to winning. 
Yeah, and it was the first time they had a really good car. <clears throat> so he was trying to get all he could get. I, I really wonder what would have happened in that situation if the positions were reversed. Because he had gotten by um, Norris at one point, but Norris got back around him. If that's Lewis, he probably gets that pass done and Science is in trouble. Yeah. I think Science gets eaten up the next lap and that's it. But Russell is young. He he showed he's got speed and Mercedes believes in him and he'll learn. He'll, yeah, you know, he'll he just learn. needs time. And um you know you said earlier about how like the possible flexi floor and the flexi wing pl- uh plan mm-hmm. uh change things up a bit. I mm-hmm. did remember that a bunch of teams bought new front wings, but Red Bull didn't. Could that have also been a factor? Possibly. Depends on what they did or did not change on their wing, but it definitely cost them. Yeah, they were saying it's the setup. Like, they're not good at Singapore, so I'm like, maybe, maybe. Who's to say at Japan? Japan, It'll be a different story, and Max just completely dominates again, but you know, it was good seeing a lot of these teams racing again. Mm-hmm. But I think it's more than just set up. Yeah, I think it's more than set up too, potentially. Um, I think they are like in an actual th- like th- this is more than just set up. I think it, this is more of they got caught doing something they weren't supposed to be doing. Because it doesn't make sense. My thing is, I wish they could have done. My thing is, I wish that if this is, you know, a flexi floor thing or a flexi wing thing, why did they do this earlier? Somebody probably snitched. Potentially. You know, much like NASCAR. This stuff doesn't get found by the officials without help. I think somebody noticed and said, look, we think they're doing this. And really, y'all need to start looking at it. And they did. Yeah, because I don't know. Their pace advantage this season has been ridiculous. Yeah. And it doesn't make sense, even with this being their worst track. Did their pace advantage went away that quickly? Like Yeah. Like I don't know. You can't blame a pace effect like that strictly <laughs> off the track, you know? Strictly off a of setup. Yeah, you can't go from two seconds a lap faster to not making it out of Q three. I mean out of Q two. There's we wonder like I don't know. Japan Japan will be what answers so many questions because the pace drop off was also concerning. The pace they had over the field was concerning. So now Japan is really the test of where where did they do something illegal or did they not? We and will I think find if out. They really did something illegal. I think that's just another another notch on Red Bull, honestly. Like Well, we're gonna find out this week. If Max yeah. is nowhere near the podium this week, then it's a third straight <laughs> championship without controversy. Yeah. Like he doesn't have a clean championship yet. We all saw what happened in twenty twenty one. Yeah, I think I think the 2022 one is legit, bro. Yeah, because the 2021, because 2022, the um, I forgot the cost cap was for 2021, not that yeah. year. So he's yeah. only got one real championship, which is 2022. 2021, we know what happened there, and then 2023, this where they were operating outside the rules, and you can say, well, they weren't checking for it. It was still in the rules that that stuff wasn't supposed to be flexing. And it was flexing when it wasn't supposed to be. And that's how y'all were able to run the car so much lower than everybody else. Well, we know they've... 
Well, we actually, I kind of take it back now because we know they were doing it last year. Because yeah, they ran did. their car lower, so much lower than everybody last year. I think that's when the uh, I think that's when they really started to dominate. Yeah. Last so they year. um, there's a lot that we're gonna have to see happen on this weekend in Japan, and it's. Does Red Bull have their pace back? If their pace comes back, then yeah, it was a blip. You know, it was just a really bad weekend where everything that could go wrong did go wrong. If they cannot, if they don't get out of Q2 this week in Japan, then we start talking about whether or not this championship is tainted. Because it makes absolutely no sense that their pace fell off this much. You will see. Uh, it's all eyes on Red Bull. Honestly, yeah. all eyes are on Red Bull this weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Another issue I have with Red Bull is their second driver, who made some very interesting overtakes this weekend. Last weekend, Sergio should have had a couple of five second penalties. And here's the thing, Daryl. He did. Mm-hmm. For Albon, he did get a five second penalty, but he was so far ahead that it didn't matter. Yeah. So my problem with this is, I feel like penalties like that, where the driver lunges down the inside with no disregard for if the other guy's going to make the turn or not, should definitely get a more harsher penalty. Mm-hmm. Because what Perez did to Albon was ridiculous. Well, as I said, I don't like how the penalty system works in Formula One. I I don't. I really don't either because Perez lunges it down the inside. Albon turns into him, not expecting him to do that. He has to drive straight ahead, and Perez doesn't get a penalty for dangerous driving. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't make sense to me. Perez definitely was driving outside of his head. I don't know what he's been told about his future at Red Bull, but definitely this year he was driving absolutely, or sorry, not this year, but this weekend, they got behind and he was just seemed like he was trying to get it all back in one pass, and you can't do that. Yeah, and also I thought it was the king of street circuits. Apparently not, because he did not look good this week. And he's got a lot that he has to fix going into next week, or going into Japan, as far as rest of Red Bull, because they have a lot to prove all of a sudden. Yeah. Which is weird to say. That, yeah, they got to prove that uh, this flexi wing or flexi floor or flexi wing and floor. Mm-hmm. Isn't isn't a spoof that they're you know that you know they're genuine, but I don't know, man. If that shit, if it doesn't prove anything, and it, it proves they've been doing stuff under the radar, everyone, I feel like everyone's gonna feel some type of way again. Mm-hmm. And I mean, people have been feeling some type of way since 2021, or since the end of 2021. So. Yeah. It's not going to stop until y'all either win a championship clean or stop going outside the rules. You can say every team goes outside the rules. I don't remember Mercedes going this far out. I mean, well, the thing is when Mercedes discovered something and used it, it's usually been, you know, slapped down. Well, yeah, it got banned after the fact, but their stuff wasn't like illegal. Before they decided to slap it down. Yeah, so that's that's what I that's what I'm feeling like is the argument they're gonna say. Well, when Mercedes was winning, winning with new technology or whatever, 
they, you know, the FIA had to ban it. Yep. So it, here, it, go ahead. Mm-hmm. I was going to say it, it's unfortunate that we even have to be sitting here talking about this again, thanks to the fact that Red Bull refuses to play within the rules. Well, it's like what they say in NASCAR. If you ain't, I don't want to, I feel like it's going to be controversial saying this word. If you ain't cheating, you ain't winning. Yeah, but that's not the thing in Formula One. You know, in NASCAR, yeah, because that's, that's how NASCAR's always been. But in Formula One, they've got that thing clamped down tight. So if you're still going outside the rules while doing that, that's not a good look. It's not, and you can also say, well, they got banned for a technical innovation. And when they got that technical innovation removed, now they're slower. (laughs) Then then now now you're going to have people saying, well, Red Bull didn't cheat or anything. They just just got a ban, and now they're slower. But they did, because the floor wasn't supposed to be flexing. It was already in the rules. Interesting. And they were trying to get around it, and they sent a new technical directive out to block the people <laughs> from getting around it. And now they got caught. So, well, it's Bowen hard to feel... Me. Yeah, It's hard to feel bad for them <clears throat> because they've absolutely dominated the sport, and then they thumb their noses at anybody that calls them out when they were doing the same thing to everybody else. So I I just, I don't have any remorse for them. You know, sucks to suck. Um, Try it again when you get to uh, Japan, which we'll talk about later in the show, but we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, round two of the NASCAR playoffs are set and there were some surprising Eliminations. We'll talk about it on the other side of this break here on iSports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Hey yo, what's up? This your man Bishop, the voice of This Is KC Sports, the show where we go over the Chiefs, the Royals, KC Current, Sporting KC, MU, and oh yeah, if we got time, we'll even throw in some of that KU stuff for my people on the 913 side. Come hang out with us every Sunday, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. All right, all right, all right. Welcome to AZ Sports Daily. I'm your host, Kiernan Daly, bringing the heat to Arizona sports. There's no discrimination here. We're going to talk about every sports team, professional and college. The show is all about you, the listener. I'm here to entertain you. Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? It's going to be fun, high energy. You may not agree with what I say. That's okay. Let me hear you. Let's talk about it. Join me every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, right here on AZ Sports Daily. That's AZ Sports, D-A-L-E-Y, and at IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. What's up, sports fans? You're listening to IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I'm your favorite West Coast Wisconsinite, Bernie Bango. And if you're a cheesehead, come listen to my show, Big Cheese Sports, where we road trip around America's Dairyland, previewing, reviewing, predicting, debating, and digging into all that is Wisconsin sports at the college and pro levels. Join me on IE Sports Radio. Sundays at 1 p.m. Central Standard. Bernie out. Carolina Nation. This is John Felipe of the 
Carolina cast, of course, the podcast of, by, and for the Carolinas right here on IE Sports, your direct feed for all that is sports. And I'm reminding you to tune in Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern for the latest in Carolina sports, whether it's the Panthers that keep on pounding, the fly natures of the Hornets, the storming hurricanes, the battle of the Blues with Duke and UNC, the fight of the Clemson Tigers, or the amazing atmosphere of any Carolina college. I'm talking App State. I'm talking ECU. I've got you covered. Once again, tune in for the Carolina cast with me, John Felipe, Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. And we're back here on I Sports Radio. You're going to feed for all that is sports. It's the Extra Mile. Daryl and Michael here with you this evening. We'll get into the NASCAR playoffs in just a moment. But we have to put a bow on the Singapore conversation. Um, German website automotorundsport.de is saying that F1 teams are asking for several incidents from Singapore to be reopened and the verdicts explained as the teams are not happy with the FIA's decision making, neither are the fans. And the biggest issue happened in qualifying where Max Verstappen impeded Yuki Tsunoda and did not get a penalty for it. Um, Michael, this is th- these are the situations where the lack of FIA consistency rears its ugly head and this creates the prevalence of bias yes and another issue with that was apparently um the race engineer for Verstappen showed up to the meeting but the AlphaTauri uh person who was supposed to represent Sonoda didn't show up and that just makes you wonder was Red Bull pulling a little bit of strings there you know they did I would like to think they wouldn't. I I don't. I would like to think they wouldn't play that card like that. But you know, maybe they do. I mean, I would like to think that too. But at the end of the day, that is Red Bull's second team. They are owned by Alpha. They are owned by Red Bull, and it is not out of the realm of possibility that they told that guy, "You're not going down there." So, but if you look at everybody else, right, they get penalties Ferrari, penalties, Mercedes, penalties. Everybody gets penalties. They're stopping or Red Bull, they get away scot free, and that just makes you feel some type of way. Well, Lewis got had to give back a spot for a clean pass on the opening lap. Yeah, still trying to figure out what that was all about. And on the other side, Perez knocked somebody off the track. He got a five-second penalty for one, didn't get it for the other. That's sad. Yeah, you could also argue that maybe Sonoda wasn't looking where he was going. But, you know, yeah, these things happen. But the well, FIA seem- and its inconsistency, it, it needs to be looked at. It definitely does, but we've been complaining about that for how long now? A long time, and will it change? We do not know. Probably not. Well, let's get into NASCAR, uh, the Bass Pro Shops night race, a tame Bass Pro Shops night race by Bristol Standards. That race gets won by Denny Hamlin, and it was also the elimination race in round two of the playoffs. And surprising eliminations out of this round, Michael, with Joey Logano and Kevin Harvick out of the playoffs now. Yep, two championship drivers out of the playoffs. How do you feel about this, Daryl? I'm not surprised that Kevin Harvick fell out because, let's be honest, Stuart Haas Racing has not looked that good. It was how Harvick went out. Yeah. They were absolutely lifeless on Saturday night. 
Kevin Harvick five laps down at Bristol? At Bristol. Makes absolutely no sense. On the other side, Joey Logano, I did not have him as a first-round exit. I didn't but that either. just shows how bad of a title defense he had. He just could not consistently find the speed. Yeah, he definitely had a championship slump. And that is unfortunate. Yeah, I I at least had him off in a round of eight or final four. I had him as a round of eight. Um, I saw him going to round of eight I, or round of four, maybe. Yeah, maybe, but he just hasn't been consistent this weekend these uh this season and i wonder if it's because more people are becoming more competitive or what because all of a sudden rfk is now the the definitive four team i think that's the one thing we got to talk about though if you had told me at the beginning of the year that rfk was going to be the number one four team Going into the playoffs, I'd have told you you're drinking or on crack, one of the two. But, yeah, but here we you, are. Here we are, though. We here we are. They are now the definitive four team. Yep. Chris Busher is fifth in the points right now, starting round number two. I think he is <laughs> your dark horse to get into the championship four. Brad Kislowski is only three points out. We know he can win at Talladega, so he could easily be in after that. Um, it is a shock to see that that team has turned around this fast. But Brad's put the work in, and he believes in Chris Busher, and I think it's Chris Busher is finally starting to match some of that expectation we had from his Xfinity Series days. Well, maybe it's because he finally has some good equipment now. Yeah, and he has a team that believes in him. And you can see that in the results. You know, he's got three wins this year, and those were three wins on merit. Yeah. So it just begs the question, you know, what, you know, he has the, he had the talent. He had the talent. It's just he didn't have the equipment necessary to win, and now he has it. So now he can actually go out and compete, and we're seeing the results of this. I still think he makes the final four. I, I think he point. makes the final four too. Yeah, I don't think he's going to win it, but I think he'll be there. If he wins it, I think that'll be insane. Yeah, that'll be crazy. RFK's if he ends up picking first it up. championship in what in in their first season and Roush's first championship since how long has it been? I know yeah, it hasn't even, been since 2004. Even you, even you can't remember. It it can't have been since 2000. Hold on. Because the only one I remember is Kurt Not Bush. Texas, right? Yeah. I remember Kurt Bush, yeah. So it's been it's been a while, Daryl. It has been 2004, hasn't it? It's been 2004 since that team won a championship. And if they win the championship this year, it'll end a very long drought for them. But that's crazy that it's gone so long. Yeah. Like, I remember when that team dominated so much that NASCAR had to make a rule that they could not um, have more than four teams. Um, Because they had five teams and got all of them in the playoffs one year. Yeah, 2004, their last cup title. Yep. That boggles the mind with how good that team was that they only have the two championships in 03 and 04. 
And you would think, and you would think they would have more. Yeah. Because remember, at one time, they had Carl Edwards, Matt Kenseth, Mark Martin, Kurt Busch. I said Carl Edwards already, right? Yeah. And they had Biffle, all of them together. Oh, man, that lineup right there. That, that was the right there. That was the dream team. That was the that was the team right there. For for you youngins that weren't alive for that, that was the dream team before the Hendrick Super Team came together. That was the original Super Team when they put all those cars together. And the fact they only got one championship out of that is criminal. Very criminal. I think if those rule changes didn't happen, like the chase, I think mm-hmm. they would have had a lot more championships. Probably. I really think that. Mm-hmm. And it's possible, and it's just it's just wild that they've gone from that. They went to a back marker team. Now they're back up. While let me, you, let me tell you something, Chris Busher, he might mm-hmm. put him back on the map. He just might. He wins a championship. I'm buying a 17 shirt and I'll wear it <laughs> on the show the next week. Shoot, shoot, you and me both. We will all be decked out in Busher shirts <laughs> whenever they arrive, because obviously you got to give a couple of weeks for shipping. R- RFK, RFK. R- Keselowski bought a dying Rush Fenway Racing and revived them back up to life. I think that's a story right there. I mean, that's the story of the year if they win this championship. Especially if they win, if they mess around and win the championship. Yep. Speaking of dying teams, though, uh, Live Fast Motorsports, they are giving up the charter. They sold it for $40 million to Spire who now has an alliance at Trackhouse Racing, they're going to run um, Zane Smith in a car next year. So now Spire has a couple of charters, and you look at it, um, the charter system, whether you want it or not, originally they were $4 million, now they're worth forty. So Matt Tift, BJ McLeod, although this team didn't work out as a full-time effort, they're walking away with a lot of cash. Yeah, they're walking around, walking away with a good amount of cash. Not enough to start a Formula One team, but a good amount of cash. Yeah, I mean, what after taxes? That's going to be what twelve to fifteen million. Yeah. So they they made some bank, and I can't be mad at it. I just that team never got off the ground. Let's be it, honest. Yeah, it, didn't, it didn't get up to ground. So we will see where it goes from then. Maybe the parts get sold off to somebody else. Maybe someone else comes in and makes a part-time effort. But we'll see. But we are going into the round of the second round of the playoffs. And Michael, this is a round of chaos. We yes. have Texas, the only normal race of the year. <laughs> and then, or of this round, and then we have Talladega. Oh God! And t- and uh, the Roval. Oh God! Whoever wins Texas is going to be the happiest winner of the year because if you I'm can anyone, just go through these next two races and just coast. If I'm anyone, Texas has to be a must win. Yeah. Um there's two there's three places I don't want to go needing to win something. One is Daytona. Oh okay. two unless it's the five hundred. Two is the Roval. Three is Talladega. Those are two of the next three races. So it's gonna be a nightmare. <laughs> For the guys that do not win, uh, there's going to be especially the Roval. Yeah, it's going to be one happy person and eleven folks that are going to be biting their nails the next two weeks. Yep. 
and this will probably be where you see folks like I don't know if Bubba Walls is going to make the round of. I mean, there's a possibility Bubba can make the round of eight. We know how I good mean, he is at hats, tell day. That's off to him for making it into the next round in general. Yeah. Hats off to him for getting into this to this next round because I know yeah, a lot of people wrote him off. And we didn't spend a lot of time talking about it. Sorry. Um, when he lost the tire at Kansas, a lot of a lot of folks, me included, thought he was done as far as the playoffs, and he came back. And he came back, and he he also had a lot of help. Had a, had a lot of luck. Well, it, you know, with Logano getting caught up in a wreck helped him. But look, that's how the cookie crumbles. It's NASCAR. You know, yeah. you, you deal with it. And he got the stage points in stage one, and that's what he needed to do to make it to the next round. So you come into Texas a mile and a half. We know he's they're decent at mile and a half. Um, Talladega, where he got his first win, and we know how good he is at the plate tracks as long as they can bring a car that runs well. And then the Roval is the Roval. So... You just got to deal with it. Yeah, which, you know, I think if he doesn't make it into the next round, he he's had a really great season. Mm-hmm. You know, he maybe he didn't get a win. But besides that, he's had a really decent season. He made it into the playoffs. Both 23-11 cars made it into the playoffs. So I think 23-11 in general has had a really good season. It was a career best season for Bubba if it doesn't work out this se- if it doesn't work out either way it's career yeah. best year. Exactly. So, it's going to be good for him. Yeah. And this will be good for that team will be a good building block and 2311 is going to be here to stay. And they're going to be getting a lot of help from Legacy Motor Club joining the club, uh, joining the club, joining the organization next year as a Toyota team. So now you're going to have eight um, Toyotas out there. So that's more teams to work with. You could see them really starting to pick up. And yeah, that's going to help them going forward. Now we got to get to who we think is going to get eliminated. In round number two, this is the hardest round to predict. Yeah, really. And looking at the current playoff standings, I will send them to you here in a moment. Um, We will go over who is in and who needs to get in to make sure they're in a good spot for the round of eight. So, Michael, there is your standings, and we will go with first the guys that are in. Of course, William Byron, 25 points ahead, tied with Martin Truex Jr., uh, Denny Hamlin is third, 21 points to the good. Kyle Larson, 12 to the good. Chris Buescher, 10 to the good. Kyle Busch, 8 to the good. Christopher Bell, 5 to the good. And Tyler Reddick, 3 to the good. These are your four that are out. Ross Chastain, 3 back. Tyler with Brad Keselowski. Ryan Blaney is 6 back. Bubba Wallace is 14 back. He's the one that's got to make the biggest move, and that starts at Texas. But he also is one of the guys that I have penciled in winning at Talladega. Um, as far as the guys that I think are going to drop out of this round, I think Ryan Blaney is going to stay right where he is. I just have a feeling Christopher Bell is going to drop out this round as well, and Kyle Busch as well. We know Kyle, the team hasn't looked that great. And, I mean, they snuck their way in. or Sorry, they had a quiet way into round number two, but they're pretty close to that bubble to where I think they're going to have that one or two mistakes that cost them a chance to go to the round of eight. So I got Blaney, I got Kyle and Christopher, and my last driver out, this is going to be controversial, Kyle Larson. Mm. Taldega is, Taldega is not his strong suit. I think he's going to get caught up in something there. And he's going to end up in a hole too big to dig out of, and he's going to be out the round. Mm. 
that's surprising. Yep. Who's it gonna be your four? Uh, one of them you're gonna hate me for, but um, I Ryan Blaney. I don't see him getting in. I don't think he's been performing well recently. Mm-hmm. Um. Ryan Blaney. Uh, this is really hard to pick. Actually, this is going to be this is like I said. This is a hard round to talk about. Uh, Bubba, I think this might be as far as he can go. I don't want to say that. This is where I had him going. So, yeah, you know, the, the this is you met expectations. At this point. Yeah, this is honestly as far as I have him going. If he makes it even further, that's crazy to me. He makes it to the round of eight. This season has been an unmitigated success. I think he gets to the round of eight as Bubba Nation. You are you are tap dancing on the haters honestly. at this point. Kyle Bush, I don't really see him making it past this just because He's he's finished decently sometimes, but you know, if he's in a must win situation in Texas or the Roval, I don't see him being able to get it done. Yeah. And I guess the last one. I'm I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. Cause all of these drivers that you're seeing here have the potential to win. And that's the toughest I guess the part. Only, I guess the only one I can say is maybe Reddick. But Reddick is solid, so it's just, it's really hard to say. But those are my four. All right. Don't really, don't really want them to be my four, especially Bubba and Reddick, but honestly, it's up to God at this point for a lot of these guys. Yeah, if you don't win this Sunday, it's up to God what happens to you next. Yeah, for real. So, it's going to be fun. Can't wait for the next round, but we're going to take another quick break. But before we leave, we do want to give our deepest condolences to the Pollux family as it's been announced that Sherry Pollux passed away recently from a bout of cancer. Um, Sherry Pollux, longtime girlfriend of Martin Truex Jr., was a fixture in the NASCAR Cup Series garage for many years and was a fierce advocate for the fight against cancer. And unfortunately, her long fight has come to an end at the age of 44. Um, We'll be right back. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Davidson. It's your boy, Tires Lock. And we are the hosts of Fast Break here on IE Sports Radio, where we discuss everything in the world of basketball from prep to the pros. You guys definitely check us out, man. Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We got all the basketball information you guys need. So we look forward to you guys listening in. And please do, because we are the best basketball show on this side of the Mississippi. And please do check us out on Twitter at Fastbreak ISR. D Lock, where's our time again? 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. That gives you guys plenty of time on a Sunday. Tune in.
Hello, ladies and sinners. Hello, sports fans around the world. Hello, IE Sports family. This is Cal Henderson, the host of IE Vegas, the Sin City Sports Show, presented by IE Sports Radio. If you folks are interested in sports in the Vegas area, if you're wanting to have a blast for one hour every Tuesday night from 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, this is a show built for the Vegas sports fans where we feature the Las Vegas Raiders, the Las Vegas Golden Knights, the Las Vegas Aces, and the University of Las Vegas, Nevada Rebels. Hopefully, fingers crossed, MLB team coming soon. Either way, if you folks are looking to have a blast for one hour each and every week, tune in Tuesday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you folks are interested in Vegas sports news, Go to our Twitter, at SinCities underscore I-E-S-R. And you can speak with me, the host, Kale Henderson, at Kale underscore Henderson on Twitter. At any time, be happy to reply. Always want to reach out to our fans. Again, the Sin City Sports Show, presented by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. We're back here next to Mile High Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Daryl and Michael here with you this evening on the Extra Mile. And we were just talking about on the break, uh, Denny Hamlin's victory speech. At the end of the Bass Pro Shops night race where he tells everybody, I beat your favorite driver, all of them. That was hilarious. And that man has embraced the chaotic villain role. I think he has, and... I think I, I think that's how you should act, honestly. And that's yeah. I mean, at this point, if the people aren't going to like you, you might as well just lean into it. Uh, yeah, that's why I like Kyle Busch so much. <laughs> Until he starts talking. Yeah, Kyle is a... Uh, he's an acquired taste for some people, but hey, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. But we are... We are eagerly awaiting uh, sports car season, obviously, as we are getting ready next year um, with the WEC. And we already talked about that um, Aston Martin is planning on some having uh, cars in IMSA and WEC for 2025. There was also some news with Honda as they've changed their name to... Uh, the Honda Racing Corporation trying to align themselves better with the home or with the home islands and their information. Um, we'll see how this team goes. Maybe we'll finally see an expanding of getting that Acura to Le Mans, Finally, so Honda's joining WEC. Don't know yet, but maybe with them, you know, going to this new name and better aligning with Japan, we'll actually see that. Uh, that would be cool to see Honda and Toyota going at it. Yes. It will be a lot of fun. I just can't wait um, to see how that goes next year, but we do still have some races to wrap up. Um, as far as IMSA, they still have the Petit Le Mans coming up in next month. To wrap up that season, most of the championships still up for grabs, but one championship already decided, GTD is all done. Get you the champion for there in just a moment. As the GTD title went to Brian Sellers, Madison Snow. They pick up the championship in for a BMW in the driver's championship. Let's see if we can bring the team's championship up because I do not remember what team name they are. I, wait, I just click on them. Duh. Uh, the number one, uh, the number one quartz engine oil BMW. They won the championship there, so congratulations to them. And it was really a dominant season for them in GTD. Which was a... Oh, Paul Miller Racing. I'm sorry. Sorry. It, it's been a day. Uh, Paul Miller Racing picking up the GTD Championship. So that's decided. However, other championships are still up for grabs. And Michael, Road Atlanta, always a lot of fun. Always a lot of fun. I cannot wait for that race. Yep. 
Meanwhile, um, in the GTP category, the top three separated by five points. Gemini and Tandy for Porsche in the six. They're third. 24.55. Felipe Albuquerque and Ricky Taylor in the 10 for Wayne Taylor Racing are second and leading the championship. Pippo, Dura- Pippo Durani and Alexander Sims in the number 31 Action Express Cadillac. That's going to be a 10 hour slugfest. When we get to Indy, I mean, when we get to Road Atlanta, I cannot wait. Yeah, that's going to be a 10-hour slot for us. I cannot wait to see who comes out on top of that race. Yep. We got 19 days. We still have to wait for that one. But that's not the only racing coming up. Of course, we have Bathurst next week. But this Saturday, Saturday Night Hydroplane League is back. Division One gets started in Miami. Join us at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Saturday Night Hydroplane League Facebook. Yours truly will be calling the races for a fourth straight year. Brian Ollinger won the championship last year in Division I. Can he get it done this season? Meanwhile, Division II champion Pete Lacoste moves up to Division I to try to show that his speed was no fluke. Make sure you are with us, round number one in Miami, Saturday, 5.30 Eastern pre-race. We go with Heat 1A at 6 o'clock. Well, Michael, it's time to go for nearest the wind. We have this week NASCAR in Texas, and we have the Japanese Grand Prix. So, who you got? So, for Texas... Hands up. I'm going to go with Busher. Mm-hmm. And for Formula One, I guess I'll use my other Ferrari pick. And I guess I'll use Saints. For NASCAR, I'm going to stay with the team, but not with the driver. I think Chris Busher locks his way into the round of eight. And in the Japanese Grand Prix, I'm going to double up here, and I'm going to use Oscar Piastri. It's gonna have a good, fi- good. I'm gonna have a good run this week. Don't know if he's gonna pick up the win, but he's definitely gonna have a good run. So good luck to all the picks that you guys have for this week. So I want to thank you so much for joining us for this weekend for this week's edition of the Extra Mile. If you want to join us or talk to us on Twitter, sorry, I'm at DK Junior Twelve. Michael is at Michael underscore Wart Twenty Five. Make sure to keep it locked to our social media pages on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And make sure to keep it locked to the iSports Radio pages, iSports Radio page, excuse me, on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok and Facebook as well. Make sure. You also visit www.iesportsradio.com. Get your hands on some merch. Check out more about the shows. Listen to any show you may have missed and more. And if you've missed any live broadcast, they can also be heard wherever your podcast can be heard in the YouTube repository, which is a copy of every show we've ever done. So that'll about do it for this edition of the Extra Mile. For Michael, I'm Daryl. Thank you so much for listening. We will see you at the next green flag. Good night, everybody.